welcome to the Jodie Bunting podcast, where today we're talking Cancer Research UK with the East Midlands team, the fab East Midlands team. It's Katie, the senior executive, and Becky, the relationship manager. <laughs> Hi, girls. Morning. Hello, morning. morning. Now, I actually know Katie from about 15 years ago, I think it was, Katie. When I was yeah. working on Channel 4 on The Big Breakfast, I used to do the warm-ups here in Derby. Uh, and Katie was one of the team back then. I was a lot that bigger was than I am now, Katie. Do you remember? Definitely. I think that's why I didn't recognise you at first. <laughs> I've still, my chubby cheeks are still kind of there somewhere. No, 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 not at all, not at all. <laughs> so yeah, let's that... get going then. Becky, tell us, uh, first of all, why did you start working with Cancer Research UK? Well, I've always worked in the sort of non-profit uh, charitable sector uh, since I've left university. It's something that I feel really quite passionate about. And I would say up until the age of about 27, I didn't really know anybody who'd really been affected by cancer. But then sadly, a very close relative died from lung cancer when I was about 27. And I just knew then that I really wanted to work for Cancer Research UK and a job was advertised as, as an events and community fundraiser back in 2005. And I went for it and I got the job. And 18 years later, I'm still with Cancer Research UK because it's just such an amazing organisation to work for. And sadly, Throughout those 18 years, I've lost other relatives to cancer and a very close friend to stomach cancer at the age of 40. So I feel really, really passionate about what the charity is hoping to do and accelerate progress. So um, really, that's the reason why I'm still here. Oh, that's nice. And how did you what was your role when you first started with uh, the charity and what do you do now on a day to day basis? Well, I, I used to organise events within our volunteer fundraising team. So I used to organise a, a really, it was a great sponsored walk for breast cancer at Chatsworth and at Wollerton Park here in Nottinghamshire and also an abseil down the, um, it's the building at the Nottingham University, the Tower Building. And I really enjoyed the events. It was great. Um, but then I've gone more into sort of community fundraising now. So I look after lots of wonderful um, fundraising groups, people who may have been fundraising. These are groups of people who have been fundraising, some of them for 50 years for Cancer Research UK, which is absolutely wow. amazing. So I look after them in terms of I support their fundraising and help promote their fundraising. Um, and I also do a lot of new business as well. Um, obviously, COVID has had a massive effect on charity our volunteers our supporters and what we're doing now is we spend a lot of time you know contacting local businesses trying to win their partnerships uh, uh, recruiting new volunteers recruiting new supporters so my job is very very varied and it, it's just not the same every day is very very different great now, when I think Cancer Research UK, I still think Race for Life. Is it is it the biggest event that brings the most money in still? Um, Race for Life is still really, really popular. There's no doubt about it. And it's it's really, really successful. But we've got lots of other events. Uh, and I think most people do think about Race for Life, but we've got Pretty Muddy. We've got Ultra White events. We've got the Relay for Life events that take place. Um, so there's lots of other events that take place um, that Cancer Research UK organise. And I love the way you've done the two opposites as well, the, the muddy versus the rainbow, because I would never, ever do the muddy. But the rainbow, I'm ready to run through it. <laughs> oh, pretty Muddy's fantastic. Absolutely. I've, fantastic. Done pretty, I've done Pretty Muddy a couple of times, actually, for the charity. And it's a really good giggle. It's definitely one I think you need to put on your list, Jodie. Well, they always say the things that you don't look forward to are always the things you should do. So I think exactly. you're right. <laughs> exactly. Right, Katie, tell us again how, how you started and what, what you do now. So um, so I, I used to work in a very, very different industry. I used to work in the theatre industry. I used to be um, a theatre stage manager. Um, and the time I remember doing, taking part in um, Loughborough Race for Life with my mum. And um, we were taking part and I looked up on the stage and the event organiser was um, stood up there with a the microphone 
talking about how how many thousands of pounds we'd all raised for Luff, Luff Race for Life. And I said to my mum, I went, I want to do that job. I want to be up there doing what she's doing. I want to, I want to organise these. And within a few months, amazingly, um, a, a, a job opened up in the East Midlands. I applied for it and got it. And then um, many, many years later, I'd organised probably <clears throat> up to about 100 um, Race for Life events across the East Midlands. Um, wow. It was it's it was a brilliant job. I absolutely loved it. Um getting thousands of it was just women at the time that could take part. Now anybody can take part. Um Which is why you dress of... up as a woman to attend, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you snuck through. <laughs> but um it's great now because anybody can take part. Um and it was it was just it was such a rewarding job. It was really hard work. It was a proper grafter's job. Um, you were doing course work, uh, course walks all the time, marching through like muddy fields, working out routes for the, the races and everything like that. Um, it was a brilliant job. But then seeing those women cross the finish line, um, all, all with their own story, all having raised hundreds and thousands of pounds, some of them, it was so rewarding. Absolutely loved it. But then, um, then I had children and working those crazy hours and weekends didn't seem to fit anymore, but there was no way I was ever going to leave Cancer yeah. Research UK. Um, <clears throat> and then again, the opportunity came up um, with a new corporate partner that came on board uh, called Ultra Events. Um, they need, We needed a team of people to help manage the relationship between Cancer Research UK and Ultra Events and also support all of their participants who fundraise for us. So an opening came up, I went for that job and um, yeah, many, many years later, I'm still here, still doing it. Um, it's very different to Race for Life, but it's still it's still dealing with brilliant participants that are raising hundreds and thousands of pounds for Cancer Research UK. So it's great. And how many people actually work for East Midlands? Because I think when people do come along to like a Race for Life and they see all those volunteers, they don't realise that actually those it, there isn't a massive team and you do actually a lot of the work. Yeah, right? it's, a, it's a skeleton team, that, not, not that many. Um, and we rely, don't we, Becky, heavily on volunteers for a lot of things that Cancer Research UK do. They are the not just Race for well. Life organization there's no doubt about our volunteers and yeah. our supporters are, are the lifeblood of the organization it's them who do the fundraising uh, and we rely on them for so much in terms of volunteering not just at events but in our retail shops yeah um, as well do you know they are primarily run by volunteers <laughs> and they're so dedicated they're so de they dedicate their life to cancer research uk and 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 it it shows doesn't it Becky like they're just they're amazing people what they do they give up so much of their time for us and it's like yeah it's absolutely brilliant and, and of course every time every every volunteer that we have saves the charity money um yeah. so they're so important to us they're so important to us which leads me well on to my next question that why is Cancer Research UK loved by the British public because I do a lot of charity work but when I share any sort of link to do with CR UK people just automatically sponsor me and give me money why is it Becky do you think? Um, I think we are we are a very well known charity um, I think people trust us we're very transparent but I think most people are affected by cancer in some way ultimately um you know the statistic is it's one in two people will get cancer so even if you're not the person who gets cancer you will know somebody who will yeah. have had cancer and i think people are really proud of what we've achieved and want to buy into our ambition you know over the past uh, 40 years we've helped double survival rates so 40 years ago it was about one in four cancer patient would survive for five years now it's two in four cancer patients will survive for at least 10 years and what we've said is that we're going to accelerate that progress and get three in four cancer patients surviving uh, for 10 years or more by 2034 so that's in the next 11 years we want to get three in four cancer patients surviving for at least 10 years 
and we are making progress and I think the public can see that it's when I think back to when I wasn't here when we when the merger happened when Cancer Research UK was formed following the merger of the Imperial Cancer Research Fund and the Cancer Campaign Charity but since that which was in 2002 cancer deaths across the UK have dropped by 16 percent Wow. And we have our, our research has has been part of that progress, has been a massive part of that progress. And that's what we need to continue doing. We want people to live longer, better lives, free from the fear of cancer. And we've got a really robust strategy in place, ensuring that we are going to hit those survival uh, survival rates, those targets that we've set ourselves. And I think the public want to get behind it. They want mm. they want this. Katie, have you seen anything else that you think that makes it loved? That makes it um just we're really <clears throat> we're really honest with our supporters. We we try and be as transparent as we possibly can. We show people how we're spending their money, where their money's going. Um, we don't get any um government support. So everything, everything that comes into us is from the public. Um, it's we're really, we're really open and honest with people, and I think that means a lot to people yeah. there's no there's no hiding anything um we talk about um we talk about our stats a lot but it's important to because it's important yeah. to show how things have come on over the years i mean over the last 40 years cancer research uk has doubled breast cancer survival rates in the uk that is amazing and that's yeah. down to the money that the chat the, the public bring into us the research that we can then do um you know we've helped prove the value of cervical screening um it's so important it prevents thousands of deaths every year it's it's huge what we do but we're telling the public about that all the time um so you know you go into one of our shops there'll be posters everywhere saying where their money how their money's helping um and and i think it's really important that we keep that at the forefront the honesty and the transparency of where people's money is going and I think I was going to say, we cover all areas of cancer research. We don't just do the basic research. We do all the clinical trials. So what mm -hmm. we do is like <clears throat> bench to bedside. So we make sure that what is being discovered in our research labs actually helps benefit patients. It's translated into treatments or into procedures to diagnose cancer earlier. And the cervical cancer um screening program is an, a massive achievement and cancer mm -hmm. research uk has been at the heart of that development it was our scientists who discovered that the hpv virus was linked to cervical cancer julian pito's work discovered that about 99.7 percent of all the cervical cancer samples contained the hpv virus nothing had ever been seen like that before yeah. our scientists then went on to say you know we can develop vaccines they're the ones who put forward the idea that we can get a vaccine for cervical cancer and cancer research uk helped trial the vaccine program we helped fund that get that out trial it which is now obviously run by the NHS. And our research, um, our recent research has just discovered, actually, it was just um, announced in, what was it, 2021, that there's a 90% drop in cervical cancer cases yeah. now, yeah. thanks to that Amazing. vaccination programme. And we know that in the next 20 to 30 years, if we can get ev all the young, you know, the 12-year-olds vaccinated, and they're looking at now trying to get one vaccine, so it's cheaper, we can eliminate mm -hmm. cervical cancer. That's that's yeah. where we're heading Amazing. for. Yeah. So that's just a massive achievement. Achievement and Cancer Research UK has been instrumental in getting that, and that's why I think you know we are so loved by the public. So we look at, so we do look at how can we eliminate certain types of cancer. We look at how do we how do we prevent cancer we do a yeah. lot of research on prevention as well so we know that four out of ten cancers are due to lifestyle so we try and get information out to the public that they can understand so they can hopefully make those lifestyle choices to help reduce their risk of developing cancer we do a lot of research on early diagnosis we know that if you pick up cancer early you have a better chance of survival. And I've seen that in in, in terms of my family. My mum's had mm -hmm. bowel cancer in her 80s twice and has survived it. Do you know, that is 
you know 20 years ago that wouldn't have happened no it was picked up really early <clears throat> from a blood test the proof that she had anemia that she was losing weight and they literally got her through to, to have a colonoscopy within two weeks and it was picked up so so quickly and she's still here at 88 yeah. which is absolutely amazing yeah and then obviously we look at um we look at new treatments developing new treatments new drugs that can help 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 um either cure cancer or can help prolong life but it's not about it's not about just longevity it's about the quality of life as well and that's yeah really... we're trying to make kinder treatments aren't we Becky absolutely. So, so, absolutely. so things aren't so um invasive and um you know so so basically people are having a better time during treatment um and that's Matt that's a huge part of what we do as well um mm. so there's so there's so many areas that we focus on it's not just a cure for cancer because there's two there's over 200 types of cancer um to to look at and there's no, there's no cure for one cancer but we already have cures for cancers it's already happening which is so exciting uh becky a point that you just made there about lifestyle um i always remember this is when I, my real turning point for cancer research uk when i thought yes they're actually doing it for the people and that was a big sign i saw obesity causes mm. cancer yeah. you know so many charities are i think they're actually scared to offend people but this is the truth you know this is what your scientific researchers have shown that all these lifestyle factors are causing cancer and just being able to tell the public that in a nice gentle way that you know this is this is you know dare i say it cancer research uk has got balls what do you think beck <laughs> Yeah, I do. I think if we obviously we don't want to go out and offend people. And that's yeah. not something we try and do. What we have to do is we have to tell the public what our research has shown. Yeah. So, you know, we were involved in we know that smoking is the biggest cause of cancer in the UK. So we do a lot of campaigning work in um, we help to get smoke free workplaces, plain packaging on cigarettes because we don't want young people taking up smoking because um, we know that it's linked to about 13 different types of cancers. We know that obesity is the second most preventable cause of cancer. We know there is a link there. So we just want to make sure that we get that information out to the public. And we're not saying, gosh, you've got to be really, really thin. It's yeah. not about that. It's about recognising what your body's like and and and, and having, having that, making those really good choices in life. And I know sometimes it can be difficult, but we know that we talk about eating sort of five pieces of fruit and veg today, having a balanced diet, doing gentle exercise. This is not just about cancer, though. This is yeah. not just about cancer as well. This is about long term health. Yeah. For, for everyone and it's across the board whether it's cancer or heart disease we know if you make those choices where you give up smoking there's no doubt about it the best thing anybody could ever do and I would say that is give up smoking my uncle was a smoker he smoked a pipe and he died in his 60s from lung cancer and yeah. it was absolutely contributed contributed by the fact that he used to smoke a pipe yeah. um so you know if you can do that if you can keep a reasonable weight this is what we're saying and you can keep active and you can try and get your fruit and vegetables and reduce the amount of alcohol you drink we're not party poopers you know we're not saying you've got to eliminate everything it's about sort of moderation and just keeping on check in terms of what you're eating you know we know that lots of processed meat is linked to bowel cancer yeah it's it's proven so it's about let's have a look at let's if you take yeah have a look at what we're doing in our lives and making those choices it will help our long-term health which is which is what we all want um we all want to go into our older age feeling fit and well and it will be better for it will be better for the nhs as well absolutely yeah. better for everybody and better yeah. for everyone we'll have a healthier society <laughs> becky i wanted to ask you about this book i've been reading by jay shetty about love right he reckons that if you serve as in you do charity work with your partner it makes you your relationship boom do you think this is correct i think yeah i think there is there is definitely uh, yeah, there is definitely some uh, truth in that, that if you come together 
whether that's as a family or as a community and work together behind a cause I think that brings people so much closer together we have an event within Cancer Research UK called the Relay for Life and that is about local communities coming together to fundraise and then getting together one one day of the, uh, of the year for 24 hours to celebrate what they've achieved and it's got an amazing community spirit and you see people from different you know generations coming together behind one cause to raise money um and it's just it's got a lovely lovely feel to it so i think yes there is some truth about working together i think it helps relationships as well i think if you're passionate about something together that's got to be really really positive yeah. and I, I would say you know we're looking at companies i'm always you know approaching companies to support cancer research uk as you know part of their charity of the year and a lot of really successful companies have very good social responsibility policies and part of that will be supporting charities getting their staff together whether it's in team building exercises or taking part in ultra or taking part in race for life or just getting people together to work together behind a cause that they're all passionate about and it really does help promote morale and a yeah. lot of people they will look at a company when they want to when they want to maybe go for a job and they'll have a look at their social corporate responsibility policy they'll have a look what they're doing for their local community um, and people feel really um drawn to those companies who do that so i think yeah definitely yeah it's all it's all very positive now recently i've had my cancer research uk goblet out because i am this sunday doing an ultra event i'm doing ultra ballroom and this is your <laughs> speciality isn't it katie what's ultra it certainly is tell us about so, it so ultra events the fab ultra events so they are an events company um, and they deliver events all over the uk they've got hundreds and hundreds of events going on at any one time and they have been a fundraising partner of cancer research uk since about 2014 so they offer their participants the chance to kind of learn a new skill now they've got various events. They've got ultra white collar boxing where you uh, learn to box for eight weeks and then take part in an event after the eight weeks. They've got ultra MMA, which is mixed martial arts, uh, ultra comedy, where you get to learn um, the art of stand up comedy for eight weeks and then perform at the end of that. Um, and of course, ultra ballroom, which you've just mentioned, um, which is where you get eight weeks of free ballroom dance training. And then at the end of it, you perform at a big glamorous event now where we come into it is um ultra events ask their participants to raise a minimum of 50 pounds for cancer research uk through just giving page um and to date they have now almost raised 29 million pounds for cancer amazing. research uk it is it is amazing what they do um it's it's unbelievable. So to yeah, since 2014, they've now very nearly raised 29 million pounds. Um, and what we will do with that money is just it's so much. They're so important to us as a corporate partner. Um, and not only do they raise money for us, they just what we were talking about, they um they help people get fit. They help people um, with their lifestyle choices, you know, so with their boxing training or their MMA training or even their ballroom training, as you know, um, it can be physically demanding. And people are used to kind of sitting down every night watching the telly ultra. You take part in an ultra event. By the end of it, it's probably the fittest you're ever going to be. Uh, you do training twice a week. You get to meet new people. They encourage you to uh, lead a healthier lifestyle. They tell you to go for runs. And then you perform in this incredible event, you've raised money for a charity and you are on top of the world by the end of that eight weeks. Um, so, yeah, so ultra events are really important to Cancer Research UK. I am literally on top of the world now that I've got my Cancer Yay! Research UK on. Um, the fittest I've been all year and I'm ready for my event on Sunday. So I back everything. That we can't wait. Heard. Good luck. <laughs> we can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. And how much have you raised? Uh, I've raised um, over £200 yeah. on my fundraising page, but then I've also yeah. been with my goblet. I've got yes. some cash as well in my boxes and stuff as well because I've been selling my little little Cancer Research UK yeah. bracer. I've done everything you've told me, Katie, okay? Thank I you. Think so. Good boy. 
Good boy. But but it's amazing, well isn't it? That's amazing. That's, that's 300 pounds from you. And if everybody does that, it's it, this is how they've now raised 29 million pounds for us almost. Yeah. It's just it's it's incredible and um it's what people the you know the things that it changes people's lives taking part in an ultra. It event. saves I, lives. It, and it's then saving lives. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Ultimately, yeah. that's where that money will go. It will yeah. go to research that will save lives. Yeah. They, they, you know, you can't, it's, you must feel very proud, Jodie, about what you've achieved. Absolutely. Because that's what you are. You're a lifesaver. Oh, that's thank all you. Our su- that's what all yeah. our supporters are. They are the people who fund the research. They are yeah. making that massive contribution to the charity. Thank absolutely you. absolutely and we can't wait to hear all about your ultra ballroom event on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> you have to send us <laughs> pictures <wait>. or a video <laughs> yes, and your part you mean you're part of the um the derby team that have raised almost five thousand pounds just through their just giving pages um and you're joined up with the nottingham team who have raised about six thousand pounds so that's like eleven thousand pounds yeah, it's so good to be a part of that it's incredible it's absolutely incredible and on Sunday so all over this weekend there'll be uh, I think there's probably about 25 other ultra events going on at the same time um I don't know how much they've raised all together but it's 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 yeah, a, lot, a lot and it's huge and it's 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 amazing what they do absolutely amazing now uh, the last question on this podcast always has to be a topical one it's nearly Easter so I've got to ask you Katie what Easter treat are you looking forward to? Well, I don't normally ask for an Easter treat. I normally steal my children's and it, it, stolen Easter egg is, is so much nicer than when you get bought one. So I'm looking forward to sneaking into the cupboard when they've gone to bed <laughs> and stealing their Easter eggs and then and then pretending I have no idea where it's all gone. Um so yeah and also just spending some nice some nice time um with the kids and the husband over the long weekend getting out some fresh air um getting some walks. I've really got into walking since lockdown. I love walking so yeah I'm really looking forward to getting some nice big long walks in there and then coming home and stealing my children's chocolate. <laughs> Well, like you, I've been doing some fundraising, Jodie. So I've done March All Over Cancer this March. So I've done 10,000 steps over every every day. That was something I um, I said I would do for Cancer Research UK and have raised over £200. So I want to thank all my sponsors for uh, for sponsoring me. Um, um, I think what I'm going to enjoy over Easter is I am going to enjoy having a bit of time with the family I'm going to see some of my relatives as well who I don't you know I'm a working mum of two so I don't get to see my parents as much as I'd like to so I'm going to see them I am going to have a little bit of chocolate I love Lindor chocolate I'm oh yes that. you like quality back <laughs> honestly I do oh, oh I love it yeah so I am going to have a bit I'm going to have to hide it from my children because they love it too and they'll be stealing it so yeah I think that's what I'm going to be doing over Easter do you know I'm going to ha- try and carry on walking that that is something I've said I, I've really enjoyed going out in the evenings having a bit of a walk trying to get my steps up because you know we do sit around quite a bit when we're working sitting at a desk so I hope to get some steps in over the Easter as well. You know what I really love about these just giving pages now? They, you can, I can connect my Strava to it and it automatically pr- like tells everyone how I've been getting on. Isn't that yeah. genius? It's brilliant. It is brilliant. When you do events like that, if you do walk all over cancer or we've got the, uh, the, the dog walkie challenge in April, do you know, it's great to link it. Uh, it's great to link you just to give him page so people can see how well you're doing. I like to post it on Facebook as well, just to say, look, I, I have done my 10,000 steps today. And some days I've gone for some, you know, over the weekend, I've gone for some really long walks and I've, I've done 25,000. So I feel quite <laughs> fit by the end of March. So I'd like to continue with that. And you are, will you carry on ballroom dancing? That's what I want to know, Jodie. Well, yes. When I when I win the glitter ball trophy on Sunday, I may have no choice. I have to yeah. expand my career in ball, <laughs> ballroom. Ballroom dancing sounds brilliant. <laughs> so, if people want to get in touch with the East Midlands team of Cancer Research UK, or generally get in touch, what are the best ways to do that? Uh, well, you could email me. And it's Rebecca, R-E-B-E-C-C-A dot Elphick at cancer dot org 
uk or you can go onto the website and um oh, you can, can ring me on my mobile i can give you my mobile number which is 0771 945 726 or you can go you can go onto the website and you'll find links to all all the different things that people can get involved in whether they want to do individual fundraising whether they want to do ultra whether they want to do race for life whether they want to do relay for life it's all on our website cancer research uk website so the link to that is in the description below guys and also below you'll find a link to my personal sponsorship page as well so if you'd like to see me <laughs> dancing this coming sunday the best thing is if you sponsor me you'll get automatic updates and see me dancing this coming sunday so please do guys uh thank you katie thank you becky so much for your time keep on going with the great work uh, and thank you so much well, thank you. Thank you for your fundraising because it's you guys who really do make the difference. Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you.